Philip Rowe appeared before the Dewey Beach Board of Elections on Thursday, September 26th, with his complaint about an election flawed by discrepancies between machine and absentee ballots, and his further concerns over how Paul Bauer represented his residency status as a candidate for town council. Can you please explain? Uh, the paperwork, as it turns out, submitted is fraudulent, and that's my claim. All right. Well, and there's a penalty in the town charter for fraudulent filing. So at the very least, that should be addressed and pursued. Well, that, that's, your, that's your contention, that it's fraudulent. Yeah. So, so let's... Roe has stated that his September 21st loss to Bauer by just six votes, a percentage that sparked an automatic recount, has nothing to do with his complaint. His concern centers on how residency status can have an impact on how people in Dewey Beach vote. With extreme time constrictions in play, the courtroom-style hearing was held with just a few days' notice. Roe chose to represent himself before the board. Town solicitor Fred Townsend read from state statute during a series of convoluted questions posed to Roe, most of which were unanswerable without extensive legal knowledge. Um, do you acknowledge that there's uh, a bright-line test for establishing residency and a subjective prong of that test as well? And again, I, I'm not holding you to the same standards as uh, your, your attorney if you were represented, but I will ask you this I, way. I don't really know the answer okay, to that. I that's haven't fine. had time to consider that. That's a fair, fair answer, but um, I'm going to indicate to you that residency, uh, it, the bright line test for establishing residency is going to be whether there is a dwelling in the jurisdiction that, that one could intend to make their primary residence. Could or does? Could, could. No, I'm, I'm saying that's prong one, that's prong one. So, so if, if, if your opponent owned a restaurant and no dwelling in this jurisdiction, you would be contesting whether he is even eligible to run, correct? I don't know the rules for restaurants, so I can't answer that either. Okay. Well, you acknowledge... Townsend said he was attempting during the questioning to bring the Board of Elections up to speed on the law. However, it made for an awkward and frustrating exchange with little resembling due process, as seen here at the 20 minute 44 second mark in the accompanying video clip. You know, I might as well just go file with the state well, and sue him in civil court. I believe that's the appropriate place for your complaint, but I would, I'm, I'm not, in, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to disallow you from, from continuing, you know, Okay. I just don't know where we're going. So. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> I'm serving. This is actually very helpful for the board. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So please be open to it. Yeah, I'm open to it. Okay. I just. Because it's your. It's, it's going on for a long time, and I don't know, you know. What, right. Well, going. again, I, I, I am not unsympathetic to your position. Um, I can tell you that okay. if you filed in court for some kind of a, a injunctive relief, you would be in a similar scenario. You would, you would be answering a lot of questions of, of the court. Understood. Okay. <clears throat> but I haven't done that. <clears throat> An explanation from the September 23rd meeting shed some light on how the ballot error occurred. It appears information from the last election was used as a template for the new absentee ballot instead of election officials referencing the newly filed paperwork. That paperwork included Bauer's change to residency status. The matter was summarily dismissed on the spot by Elections Board Chair Elaine Bull as a clerical error. At the September 26th hearing, Townsend called the issues, quote, a couple of irregularities, end quote and said, quote, election officials are not required to investigate the candidate's submissions for truthfulness, end quote. This should raise questions for town commissioners. Is the matter being swept under the rug? Was it properly investigated? Bull said they were shorthanded. Is that situation being dealt with? At the very least, commissioners should be concerned about costs, as their main focus is managing the town budget. Where would the money come from to hold a second election? What about attorney fees? It is not micromanaging on the part of town council to address operational issues within a department, and no citizen should feel like cost is a reason to not come forward when something is obviously wrong. During his questioning at the hearing, Townsend repeatedly told Rowe he should have noticed the ballot discrepancies and brought them to the board before the election, even though Rowe had made it clear he was not aware of the issue beforehand. Rowe was told he should have gotten the ballot ahead of time, but would it have occurred to anyone to request both ballots and compare them?
Rather than Roe taking on the job of proofreader, could the problem have been more readily detected if ballots were simply posted on the town website in the interest of fully preparing voters? Townsend suggested Roe intentionally withheld his concerns until after the election, causing them to be outside of the jurisdiction of the board. Roe said he knew Bauer represented himself as a resident and had an issue with it, but reiterated he did not know about the ballot discrepancy before the election, which escalated the matter to an immediate complaint. Finally, Townsend asked Roe to state his complaint to the board, at which point Bowles said she would not entertain allegations, as seen here in the accompanying video clip at the 26-minute, five-second mark. I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Um, Please realize that allegations will be very... I, we want to hear what you have to say, but if there is things that are just allegations, it's not fair to have them spoken. I will hit the gavel to ask you to stop it under the, the support of the attorney. And, and for my, my argument is I have allegations, so I'm not sure exactly how I well, uh, state my case with no allegation. Well, Mr. Rowe. Instead, he and Townsend spoke circumspectly at what might be allowed, with Roe alluding to a long list of issues and potential criminal activity. Townsend's response was to state what should have been said at the beginning, that the Board of Elections does not have jurisdiction to set aside election results. If he knew the Elections Board had no jurisdiction once an election was over, why did Townsend prolong the hearing, asking question after question, knowing Roe would not be able to answer? Why did he direct Roe to state his complaint to the board, knowing it did not matter? And why would Bull expect to not hear allegations in a complaint that is essentially a request to investigate allegations? Roe was forced to give up, saying that he would take his case to the State Elections Commission. He went on to make this statement, seen at the 31 minute, 13 second mark. One of my issues is all the people that supported me and contributed to the campaign Mm -hmm. are out money because of this filing. So, you know, it's it's an unfair filing. It's an illegal filing under the town's own charter. If there's nothing to be done about somebody running for one of the highest offices in the town, violating the town's charter, we have no rules. Well, M- Mr. Rowe, I'm not saying... The hearing was concluded with a unanimous vote to deny the complaint based on lack of jurisdiction, followed by a public comment session where no one chose to speak. At the post-election organizational meeting on October 2nd, re-elected commissioners were sworn in, followed by a vote for mayor. Bauer nominated T.J. Redifer. There was no call for further nominations. The vote was unanimous.